Hello everyone and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz and today we're actually going to discuss what is alchemy and break it down so that we can begin to move in this spiritual journey of understanding who we are exactly in this cosmos, in this universe, who we are, period. So I want to thank everybody first who subscribes to the channel. If you're a subscriber, please continue to share the videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Then hit the bell icon so that you'll get notified when new videos drop. Everyone who supports the channel on Patreon and those who shop at Uncle Ren's Popcorn, I greatly appreciate you and my gratitude goes out tremendously for your support. So the alchemical mindset, what is alchemy? The word alchemy has been thrown around a lot lately. You can get on a cruise ship and they will say that we have an alchemical bar or an alchemy bar or an alchemy nail shop. And all these things of alchemy, meaning from the idea of chemistry, of creating, of mixing together, of elevating something from one state to another state. Most people have a basic understanding that alchemy is the transmutation of one thing to another thing that is supposedly getting rid of the impurities of the base material and coming into a greater um, product. But what truly is alchemy is what we will discuss today. If you agree, great. If you don't agree, also great. So the word alchemy is a combination of words. Al, which equals the art of, and then chem, which means Egypt. So the art of Egypt. It was called that because alchemy is supposedly taught to the Egyptians by Thoth, the Atlantean. Thoth the Atlantean in the Emerald Tablets, which is the basis of where most of our understanding of alchemy today comes from, was something that was taught in Atlantis and carried by Thoth at a flood after a flood that occurred in Atlantis. Now, this flood could have happened 12,000 years ago or 26,000 years ago or even older than that. Some scholars will debate whether Atlantis even ever existed, whereas others go by Plato's rendition and say that Plato's grandfather told him of where Atlantis was and of this sinking. Well, the Emerald Tablets, which is made of a material that we seem to not understand in our, in our, our, our mindset of chemistry, doesn't ionize. We can't write on it, so it is a mystery within itself. But the Emerald Tablets, which the Kabbalion would be the cliff notes of the Emerald Tablets, states that I thought the Atlantean carried this information of alchemy from Atlantis at its sinking and came to the land of Kim and taught alchemy to the what we call Egyptians. It was also taught to the Sumerians and all of the groups in that Mesopotamian area. This could have happened over 26,000 years ago as we know the Sphinx is at least 12,000 years ago. But we also understand that from the Sumerian writings and the Egyptian uh, net metanatures that they say the gods came and brought us this information. It is often taught and often known and agreed by scholars that the Sumerian and Egyptian cultures just exploded onto the world scene already having technologies of irrigation, technologies of writing, of so many technologies 8,000 years ago, 8 to 12,000 years ago, that they gave credit to say the gods brought them to us. The Anunnaki brought it to us. So there is a possibility that Thoth, supposedly being an Anunnaki himself, brought this information to the people of Kim, the people of Sumeria, because Thoth is equal to Enki, who we know from the Sumerian text, loves to bring knowledge to man. So whether we call him Thoth, or as the Greeks came into Egypt, came into Sumeria and began to learn 
from those people, who learn from the mystery schools, as Pythagoras spent 20 years in Sumeria and 20 years in Egypt learning from the Egyptian philosophers, the Egyptian mathematicians, the Egyptian alchemists, and then took that information back to Croton and opened his school, mystery school, and began teaching it. Now, many people will say he stole the information, but it wasn't a stealing of the information. It was purely that he came and learned and took it back to Croton and began teaching it in a way that the people of Croton would understand it, the way the people of Greece would understand it. And we see this throughout ancient history where information is related to the people based on how they can understand it. And if we actually dissect it, our religions of today, we will see that each religion teaches the same alchemical processes, the same alchemical mindset, just in the way that they can understand it. So when we speak of thought, when we speak of Inki rather, we also are speaking of thought, which we're also speaking of Hermes. Hermes in the Greeks known as Hermes Trismegistus, Hermes the thrice great, and that number, and that thrice great is very important. And then later when taught by the Romans, known as Mercury, the messenger of the gods, all embodying the same attributes, the same ar um, archetype. So it is not about stealing, it is about us gaining an understanding of it based on how we can understand things in our culture today and how we are today, because that is what the ancients did. They understood it based on their culture. So in one of the first ideas, the first writing, the first paragraphs of the Emerald Tablets, when it gets into the information of the Hermetic Principles, because this is where the Hermetic Principles come from, all these writings create the, the Corpus Hermeticum, which the, was taught in the ancient world. And then it was lost for a time when the Abrahamic and religions came into play throughout the Middle East and Europe. And then came back again in the Renaissance era when for the Medici family it was found and translated and then spread through the Florence first and then throughout the rest of Europe. And then we have it still today, this Corpus Hermeticum. Now, in the Corpus Hermeticum and in the Emerald Tablets, it states, as above, so below. That, as the, that the above corresponds to the below, just as the below corresponds to the above. That they correspond to one another. And those two, those correspondences, make the one thing happen. And that's going to be our basis of understanding so that we have a 101 kind of uh, uh, idea of this information. That all things come from the one and all things are made by the one. Now we've seen this in all these other teachings, all these other understandings. So when you find your similarities, understand that your similarities are is, is alchemy. So all things in the universe is created by one thing and is of one thing. This was called the prima material, the first matter that all things were created. And in order to understand that, we have to know and understand that all things in alchemy are expressed by three. Just as a Christian may have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A comedic may have um, um, Osiris, Isis, and Horus, or to use the name Asar, Aset, and Hiru. Uh, just in the Vedics, they have their three. Uh, it has always been a three. And to understand that three, we need to see that in alchemy, there is the three. The three that creates everything in order for alchemy to happen, for the alchemical mindset to occur. And what is that three? Well, that three is this. <clears throat> That three is sulfur, mercury, and salt. Sulfur, mercury, and salt. These things are expressed in a way for you to be to have to break down the code. So sulfur is equal to soul. Mercury is equal to spirit. And salt is equal to the body. Now the soul represents consciousness and oil. Hence why we hear people say that they are anointed by oil for their soul. 
The spirit, Mercury, represents mind and liquor. This is why I get it to get into the spirit or when we drink spirits, alcohol is called spirits, in order to open our mind. Yes, many abuse alcohol, the liqueur today. But when we're speaking of alchemy, it is not the abuse of, but the usage of to open the mind. And the body? The body is just structured thought that also is represented by an alkaline salt, meaning a balance, a perfect balance of alkalinity where there is no destruction, no virus, no bacteria, no, no poison that harms you. That is an alkaline salt. So by understanding these three, we can better understand alchemy and how we can have the alchemical mindset. So to know the body, and we'll start with the body. The body is pretty easy for us to understand most of the time because we are all familiar with this, the body. And as it was said in the Gospel of Thomas that the body is the poverty of the flesh, right? And that it is woeful for something as divine as the spirit to come and rest in the poverty of the body. But if you truly understood the body, you will see that there is a lot more to it than even the Gnostics wrote about and attributed to Yeshua, but that the body is a concrete structure to an abstract. That if you look it up and understand that it's a concrete structure, it's giving a concrete structure to an abstract idea. Now that abstract idea meaning that it is not something that is real. The body, the physical world is not real and everything is the body, not just this is the body, but this is the body, this is the body. Everything that we have in this material world is the body and are giving an abs a concrete structure to that creates the body, but it is not real. It is only a perceived real. So that is the body. This is why we may say we are the salt of the earth because that is the body. It is that, con that abstract idea made real perceived to be real. The spirit is the mind. This is the mercury. The spirit is the mind and as well as understanding it as the mind, you will understand even more so that the spirit is the masculine energy. The spirit is the mind. Inherent is an inherent um, faculty of the mind that creates the body. That this is the movement this is the idea. This is the action, the action. And I said masculine, and let me retract that back and say that the spirit. So yeah, the spirit is the feminine energy that creates the body, all right? And then to move deeper into understanding that the soul, the soul is the consciousness, the power to think the actuating cause, the activating cause. This is equal to the prima material. The soul is where it all begins and it generates the mind. You see, with the soul, it, the consciousness, the power to thought, to think, generates the mind, which then the mind bridges the gap in order to manifest the body. So the, the information if you will, the masculine information is given at the soul, and then that information is push, pulled over, pushed over to the spirit, and the spirit nurtures it and facilitates the structured reality of the body. So when we understand that a little bit, I want you to think about that deeply, then we see that the above is the soul. The above is what the ancients would say is where the gods live. It's the God space. It's the creation space. And the below is the earth space. Is where the matter exists. Where we are. So when they looked up at the canopy of heaven they saw the above. They saw where God lives. The creator lives. They saw the prima material. They saw where the soul is. And the space that we exist is the body. The, the material. The perceived real is where we exist. And that is the body. And so the spirit bridges the two. This is why Mercury, Thoth, 
are the and Hermes are the messengers of the gods, are the information bringers, are the knowledge bringers, are the ones that mitigate the distance between the soul and the body. And when we understand that, now we can see how when the Gospel of Thomas says that it this we must that the body can't have, could not have existed because of the spirit, but the spirit exist but couldn't the body could not have existed because of the spirit. But that the spirit came and then the body. So we have to know that the spirit doesn't need the body, that the spirit manifests the body through the action of the soul. So as above, so below with the bridge of the spirit. So the soul manifests the body through the abilities, the faculties of the mind through the spirit. Therefore, alchemy is knowing and using the relationship, spirit, between consciousness, soul, and matter, the body. Alchemy is knowing and using the spirit, the relationship of spirit between the consciousness of the soul and the matter of the body. Understanding how they work together, utilizing them by under, by knowing the hermetic laws, by understanding how nature works, understanding how the universal laws work, will then make you into an alchemist and you will then be able to manifest the physical body that you desire, the spiritual body that you desire, and the soulful body that you desire, that as above, so below, as within, so without, that these things will become your reality, that the control over your physical form becomes yours, your control over the perceived matter world becomes yours, the control over your emotional plane becomes yours. The Getting into the flow of energy, getting into the flow of the way of the universe becomes a second nature thing to you because at that point you become the master alchemist and you become one with the universe. This is you getting into the flow of the way of the Tao. This is you obtaining the Buddha consciousness, you obtaining the Christ mind. This is you entering Samadhi, Nirvana, Heaven that it is all around you and inside of you. This is you coming to that knowing of who you are in this created universe and knowing the functionality, the movements, the flow of the creator and the created. So this 101 is to help you get started on becoming a master alchemist. Please continue to subscribe, continue to support the channel. Hit the bell icon and shop at Uncle Ren's Popcorn, the letter U, the letter R, the word popcorn.com. I greatly appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations, good journey.